I'm Ellen Mary. And I'm Michael Perry. And he's a plant geek. And she's a plant addict. And, and this, this is, is the Plant Face Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> This is more than just a gardening podcast. We'll be exploring the world of plants from every possible angle. We'll be talking about plant-based diets, plant materials and fabrics, the well-being qualities of plants, and giving plenty of gardening tips and tricks. So we'll be chatting worldwide to companies and individuals that are being creative with plants in new and exciting ways. From fabulous flower crowns to foliage-filled lounges, botanical moisturizers to bamboo clothing it's all here and it's all made of plants this episode of the plant-based podcast is brought to you by our friends at veggie pod their integrated raised vegetable garden bed kit makes growing vegetables easy for everyone with self-watering features and protective canopy with veggie pod you'll be harvesting your own produce in no time available in three sizes to suit any garden Visit veggiepod.co.uk and enter PBP10 for a special discount as a PBP subscriber. So today, Michael and I are at Howard Nurseries uh, in Nidis and we are with David Howard, who is somewhat of a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, there we go. It's so true. <laughs> and uh, Christine as well, David's daughter, who's now running the business. And we're sitting opposite some beautiful Howard Nurseries banners that are full of daylilies and iris, which is your favourite flower, Yeah, isn't iris it, season is starting in 10 days, so I think yeah. I will be back we've and we'll all, get some lovely yeah. pictures. Yeah, we've yeah. already caught a glimpse of a few iris on yeah. the table. Christine's going to make a flower crown out of, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a flower scarf if you get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So we... Well, you know, we want to chat about the business and find out how it all started. I know your story, David, already, but I know that listeners would love to hear about mm. it. And then later on, we'll talk about bare root plants, because obviously that's what the business is all about, mm. and get some tips for um, listeners at home to how to grow them as well mm. and what's the benefits of them. But yes. just to get going, mm. David, tell us about your, your love of plants and gardening, you know, how it all began. How it all began. I've, I've always liked plants from a primary school age. I used to sell plants when I was at primary school, and if I didn't get 50p a week, I was most offended. Wow, but that's I've the same always... as me. I was selling at school. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've always liked plants, and, and the teachers all encouraged me. And I went from there, really. That's really they? amazing that they did encourage you, actually. Yeah. Isn't yeah, I, I remember I... being ashamed of loving plants when I was I a kid. had to be... Yes, yeah. I was. I was keeping it a secret. Yes, oh. I was. Just to say, you wouldn't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you did get better over time, but once they realised you've got something there... Yeah. They sort of followed you. The no, teachers, you mean? Teachers, yeah. yes, yes. And, yeah. and I suppose they want to get good people sort of thing, mm-hmm. so they, they encourage you. But no... Um, you are right, they, they don't encourage people to go and watch soup ever, mm. and that's one of the best therapies you can have. Mm. Yeah, quite. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, yes, you can't beat it, but um, I was just talking about Iris, as you was on about. I always remember going to Itzwee John on, on a coach, we used to go on a Tuesday mm-hmm. and during the holidays, and I remember my mother and myself bought Iris um, Germanicus, you know, oh. and Rose Owen. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first plant I ever bought, and I think I was about 10 then. Wow, yeah, that's and, um, yeah, that's amazing. Really. What did your friends think? Well, like you, know, you say, uh, you didn't talk about it, really. Yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> 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 but yeah. I think you're the same as me. I loved plants, but I also loved making money out of plants. I did, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good combination. Yeah. Because there's not many people who can make money and like it. Yeah. You either like one thing or the other, but yeah, I've definitely. got a good coverage, really. Cause... Do you know what they call that? They call that a hawkpreneur. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, not an well. entrepreneur. So you are a hawkpreneur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what happened with your love of plants then after you were uh, well, selling them at a young age? At a young age, yes. Um, what happened then? Well, I, uh, I went for a nursery in this, which was called Pipers, specialising in dahlias. Mm-hmm. And it was good really because the quality there was damn good they were. And they, they, everything they sold was spot on, uh-huh. dahlias particularly. And um, and that was a good it was a good l- l- learning curve really, and I used to do the market stall on a Friday at lunchtime, 
And, and I nearly sell the stall out. <laughs> <laughs> and I get told, have you cut the price? No, I haven't cut the price. <laughs> it's just, just your selling. enthusiasm yes, and yes, that's plant right. knowledge. Yes, you know? it is. And you're just enthusiastic to, to sell the stuff and you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I think you enjoy it, really. I, in a funny sort of way, yes, you have got to think about money, but I never really worry me that much. Mm. Even to this day, I don't really worry, but as long as I've got enough money in my pocket to pay the bills, mm. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But actually, um, where did you get the passion for plants? Because for me, it came from my grandparents, so I was spending a lot of time with them, yes. and it rubbed off from them. What? Oh, yes, I think mother yeah. and father encouraged me. Because okay. see, yeah. father had allotment, and um, that's where I started with the allotment, mm. and I used to grow flowers. I was seen and uh, cut flowers at the Covent Garden, I think when I was 15, no, 16, 17. Yeah, yeah. And that was a good, <laughs> good learning curve. And um, yeah, my mother was very encouraging, and also my father was. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, it's and I think that's key. Like We often mm. talk about getting the younger generation into gardening, but actually it does start at a really young age. Oh, if, oh, you yes. have, if you have it involved yeah, in your definitely. life at a young yes, age, you yes. do tend to carry on with it, or yeah. at least go back to it at some point. It's interesting, really. when we get young boys or girls come here, you can soon pick up if they're interested. We've got one young, well, two, two, I think, and they're really keen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see they're going places. And, that's exciting. And that, and Isn't I it? always try to encourage them really if I can, because I know what situation I was yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. I've mm. always said that mine came from my uncle, and my parents also, yeah. uh, but my uncle's especially, he had yeah. this really long garden at the back of his council house, yeah. and the, the back end of the garden, where he used to grow yes. all of his own vegetables, yes. and yes. I used to go down there and help out a little bit, and that's how kind of I, I used caught to, the bug. I used to grow vegetables, but um, I don't know why I switched to flowers. I suppose I found them more interesting. They're pretty. Yeah, pretty. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never used to like eating my own veg. No. I never thought it tasted that good. <laughs> what were you growing? I, I know, but yeah. I don't know. In those days, you you know, you're a kid. You don't yeah. have the know-how. No, you're no. growing carrots, but they're just really gnarly, horrible mm, things. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I sometimes think I wish I had all the knowledge then that I got now. Yeah. <laughs> how do you put that together? I don't but know. You, get, you gather all that knowledge. You gather right? that knowledge all in. You, you just mentioned about um, noticing like that horticultural spark in younger people that join the company. Yes. And obviously we're going through a bit of a magic time for horticulture right now. Have you noticed that there are more people interested in plants oh, now than before? Oh, or, yes. Yeah. And uh, here again, I said earlier on, I think that's a therapy for when it's relaxing. Yeah. When they do... What, well, almost as an antidote to the fast pace of life Yes, now? I think it is. Yeah. Um, yes, you have to be a little bit careful when a person comes for a job. They sometimes say, oh, I, I love gardening. But that's not, not, not commercially, perhaps. Oh, yeah, they think it's this relaxing thing. Yes, They're going to just yes. sit around on the nursery all day. But yes. you actually want them to work hard as well, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. That's the difference. That's the trouble. <laughs> so how did the nursery come about then? How did that start? Oh, dear, that goes about a long way. Well, so I had allotment, and I was selling flowers when I was early and early age. I'd done the national service, come out, and... And I, I, I couldn't get a job out. Well, my, my wife couldn't, I couldn't get a job. The person what I was working for was, went bust. Could I left, I suspect. <laughs> 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 but at any rate... Um, I like a bit I of confidence. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, um, what happened? I got a job in a, in a private garden, in a farm, and they was ever so good to me. They let me have a free hand, and I could do what I liked virtually. Here again, I wish I'd have done more now, looking back. Mm-hmm. But I could have done, but um, I, I didn't realise how lucky I was. Mm-hmm. So I, was there, I think I was there about three or four years. And then Bloom's, Alan Bloom wrote to me, would I like to join at Bresingham? And I done, took it up on them. Wow. And um, I really enjoyed that and learned a lot. It's amazing there, isn't it? Yes, and that was a good, good learning curve. Yeah, really. what an opportunity. Yeah. And, oh. and I knew the manager, Morris Pritchard, he was a f- fanatic on her basis. They had a nursery party in Christchurch down in Bournemouth. But anyway, he was ever so good. He was. See, I think if you're interested, people are help you I think yeah. that's what half, half the story so um, so I was a bloom it's about five or six years but I also got this allotment and I was selling plants to bloom when I worked there <laughs> is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know 
<laughs> we, we, uh, yes, so we sell it. Dow Finney was one of the bigger things, Lupin's. Mm -hmm. and oh, nice. And you find every, if you look at any nurse who wants to achieve anything, they always specialise in the early days in something. Mm -hmm. And we was Grand Vinkers and Hyde Parrot and with a thousand. Really? Vinker? Hartley Vinker, Major, mm. Major, where you go. I think one year we got 50,000 Major one year and cleared a lot out. Wow. And wow. Hyde Parrot and My grandma used to have a lovely wow. variegated one. I'm not yes. sure what the variety is called, but yeah, it, was, Vinger, it was so invasive though. It was. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but. That was a time when lands, um, the towns were planted masses. Of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That was a good thing. Perhaps wow. it might get changed again. Mm. I prefer <laughs> mine. Mine though, it's got a much more delicate yes, oh, flower oh, and yeah. a bit oh, more yeah. better that's, behaved. That's a nice yeah. minor ones, really. The Alba uh -huh. and Acre Papyra, very nice. But but they was going in masses, and and that's what built us up. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we we had the lot, and then we bought eight acres, and then we kept adding adding to it, and, and we we're very very lucky. It's all joining. If you look at moose nurse, they have one piece there, one piece there, all over the place. Mm -hmm. But this is all join. You can okay. join up, which is very good. Um, so that's been very helpful. How where did it go from there? Was adding bits of land, three, four acres. Mm -hmm. I think the last big bit was twenty four acres, and that was nearly. I go back quite a bit now, twenty years. We had to pay four thousand per night, which was high price at the time, mm -hmm. and um, they thought we was mad. <laughs> but we made a pay, yeah. Uh -huh. And still going strong. Yeah, still going, yeah I said, I don't know if I'm coming up with my short time radio or anything, but I don't know if we might buy something else. Yeah. <laughs> That's but no, exclusive. Uh, no, isn't it exclusive? <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but no, we've got a good choice of land, really. Some light land, some heavy. You don't want too much heavy land. You want more land what's more friable mm. and light. and More like Dutch soil, because yeah, obviously yes, Dutch can yes, grow a lot in their yeah. more sandy soil. Yes, and we, we're not as good as that, but we are, yeah. we are pretty clear that we get a lot of flints which can cause problems. Okay. But other Have than you that, improved the soil over the years, though, yourself? Oh, yes, or? we put manure yeah. in, we put compost in, we find the peat, we have a surplus from the compost pots, mm -hmm. very useful. Oh, yes, we would... Um, but compost in all sorts of things, really. So what, the the compost left over in the pots, you're tipping into the soil well, well, in order to improve stuff, the soil? If I don't, if I don't make yeah. the grade, I get yeah. it, but then we'd um, uh -huh. use it like that. Nice bit of recycling there, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yes, we use it. Christine's very keen for recycling. She recycled me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> never. We could never do that. So um, over the years, obviously, Howard Nurseries has developed into a really well-known supplier of berry plants, haven't yeah, you? Yes, I suppose we have, but it's only, it's only if you're doing the quality, really quality. It's always been number one. Mm. Right. And I've always had people bring very up here where I've been keen. And like plants, we say the staff here now, they're all keen. Well, I won't say all on, but some are very keen. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's why I've gone, really. And I go in the shed now when the garden's in, all have gone out and I just look at them. That's not good enough. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> do they all go, oh, David's coming yeah, yeah, quick. Yeah, they, oh, yeah I, I do. They do say it. I can see it. Oh, look, you come trouble. <laughs> but that's what you're known for, the quality. And yeah. You sell all over UK. Do you sell anything overseas or only, we, only we, UK? We have done, but we don't... We don't go down that route really much because mm -hmm. the UK markets are good. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I guess more and more so with yes. certain changes that oh, are yes. happening. Yeah, that's in mm. our favour, really, isn't mm. it? So, um, w yes, we have sent to Holland, we sent to France, well, mm. throughout Europe. Um, but to send America and them countries and Washington. Yeah, there's a lot, it's not a lot more that, work, isn't there? And you yeah. always have to do it when you're really busy on the nursery, so we haven't pushed that one, but I think we could. Mm -hmm. Quite easy, really. Mm -hmm. We often get people to turn up from abroad and make Chinese, all sorts of okay. Amazing. So <laughs> yeah. it is a family business, isn't it? Oh, you know? yes, so Christine's fact. now here Christine's at the helm, aren't yeah. you, yeah. Christine? How are you feeling? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't think I would have come back if I'd known what our responsibility was. <laughs> 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 but your, so your history, Christine, has been always in horticulture as well, hasn't it? Yeah, um, I think I started over here when I was 12. You've done an SOS to me. That's early. Wow. <laughs> um, Absolutely. But can I ask, willingly, or were you kind of like, oh, plants? Or were you like, yeah, plants? <laughs> How did you feel? I think that... You can be honest, don't listen, David. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to remember, 
is my back garden was the nursery. <laughs> so, yeah. like, there's pictures of me being wheeled around in a wheelbarrow. So, it was very natural for you to <laughs> yeah. be around plants. Um, yeah. yeah, when mum used to go out, we used to come back over in the evenings and I'd sit in the corner, t- you'd be splitting plants. With me. So, <laughs> that was my babysitting. Um, oh, yeah. so, On a bed of bare root. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just came over, you'd done an SOS, need some help potting, someone wasn't in, and mm, yeah, that's that was right. it. <laughs> and here you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, you went away, didn't you, when you came back again? Yeah. Yeah, um, I went away nearly 10 years, I think it was, doing mm-hmm. various different things, working um, a wall garden. Um, so out. still in horticulture. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did three years of business, which was fantastic um, mm-hmm. introduction. Um, then I did, um, yeah, I did a degree at Rittle. I did a year in industry at Not Cuts. Um, yeah, I worked at Blooms in the Plant Centre mm-hmm. and nearly three years in the wall garden. So mm-hmm. I've got a really good cross section of our yeah. customer base. But yeah. you can then bring in to the business. Yeah. And I don't. I think we should also mention your wife David and you know your mum Christine because she's been part of this business oh, yes. all these years. I mean, oh, yes. how has she dealt with you being out here on the nursery all day every well, day? Well, <laughs> good point. Now my wife thought we'd done the well, in the early days on the camps on a Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. And um, she kept us in order, really, I suppose. <laughs> and um, she, uh, well, she'd do check the bills and the right. uh, count and work and all that. And no, she was checking that all the while. So we're in order, all right. <laughs> she, she kept you in check. She kept me in check, yeah. <laughs> and, and if I was six months out, she'd get on to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so we, um, we're going to talk more about bare root plants. Yes. The kind of plants that you grow here and get some tips as well for listeners mm. um, in the second part of this podcast. Mm. But just before we move on, I think we must give a special mention to the Dahlia David Howard, mm-hmm. don't you? Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. David Howard Dahlia, yes. Um, that was raised when I was in my teens. I used to grow about a thousand seedlings. Wow. So, so you hybridised yourself? Yes, or, I used to collect yeah. seed you know, of Bishop, uh, Bishop of Land up at Cumberland. Right. And so I was got all these thousand dailies and my mother and father were looking after me. Here again, mother and father helped me, um, looking after me when I went down to national service. So anyway, right, I come home on leave one, one weekend or something, I said, watch that, one's going to be good. And yes, we keep an eye on it. What did they do? They give it away, didn't they? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you Never you trust go, your plants with anybody else. Did you get a for it or what? How did you get it back? <laughs> well, no, I didn't. Well, I, I got it back from the firm what took it. But, but see, oh. the name David Hard was out then, wasn't it? They just labelled like, hey, David Hard. No, I would have never called it that. I'd have called it something completely different. Uh-huh. And I didn't like it. A bit like yourself. I, I didn't like the name. Oh, I don't like it. I'd hide around the corner. So yeah, if something was called my own name, I wouldn't be. Yeah. No, you wouldn't want to plant Ellen would feel like different, that. but, you I know, would she's love a bit it. cocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After me, I'd be like, look, look, look at this. this is me. <laughs> well, no, I was hiding up and didn't want to know. And I, yeah. I'd go to them and some, I remember going to some show or something. Oh, I think you're a marvellous your day. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was out of your control. It was already out there oh, being produced. There. Well, and... no right or something like that then. <laughs> and that was out and that had gone. And so um, I went from there, really. But um, in the last few years, I've, I've accepted it. <laughs> Tell us what it looks like so listeners can it, Well, it's orangey it. colour, it's a decorative, isn't it? And um, ideal for cutting. It's a bit lighter than some, but that's um, yeah. as a flower range thing, really, mm-hmm. when you think about it. And that's quite the... nice if it's later, actually, because then yes. you can use yes. other varieties, yes. you know, in the lead that's up. That's with the bronze foliage as well, isn't it? Yeah, bronze foliage, orange flower. That, that, yeah. that yeah. was the first thing what um, hit it, really, the bronze mm. foliage. I think we was the first double with, 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 with bronze foliage, yeah. actually. Yeah. So... Um, Pretty luck, mind you, but... <laughs> Do you love dahlias? Um, well, I grew this, I worked for this nursery, what grew dahlias, see, and I was getting the knack of um, more... I'd learned all the while, we used to shout London. I think you must go to the shows in London, that, that period, and you must get London involved somewhere. And I'd go up to the shows and learn mm-hmm. from them. And David Hyde, I think, wore the merit when I was in, in my teens, I think, then even. Yeah, that's amazing, uh, that's isn't it? Yeah. Dahlias are really quite big at the moment. I've loved, I've literally well, loved dahlias forever. And then they faded out one stage. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. And then they've come back. They have, haven't they? Because the colour range is tremendous. Really, variety, the, the variety. Yeah. There's Cafe just Olay. so many. Cafe yeah. 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 Creme de Cassis, yeah. that's a really oh, yeah. lovely one. And they're quite easy to raise, really, and 
she was, she was serious, really, when you think about no, it. I think, so. I think you just got the knack of seeing what she's going to be a good seller. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're so Instagrammable as well. Yeah. Yeah. Myrtle's yeah. folly, that's I'm, a good one. I'm growing a new one Ooh. this year, and I've, li- I've only bought it because of the name. I mean, it yeah. does look lovely, but it's called Boogie Woogie. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what about, have you, oh, I really want to gossip about dahlias for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever come across a scented one? Because there's often stories that, what is it, twinings? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bred by Kit Strange, I think, at yeah. Wisley. They say that's fragrant, but I've never detected any fragrance now, in that or when, any of when the others. When it was grown years ago, I mean, that'd be 40, 50 years ago, and they one or two said it's scents in, but I've never, mm. no, I've never done To they be of, honest... They often say honker is fragrant as well, but again, yeah. I tested that. I it's, think they do not. honk, actually, daily. <laughs> they smell no. really bad when you've had them in the vase and they're slightly going over. They've yeah, got no, a really weird smell. Depending on what condition they're in, if it's a dry condition, then you would get a smell. Yeah, but you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, you, like you say, I couldn't guarantee that wouldn't. I think the most fragrance is almost from the nectar. Yeah, there, it's not yes. necessarily fragrant yes. plant. But I'm always fascinated with the different species that are in a plant. Like yeah. Del- delphiniums, for example, yes. there's a fragrant species in delphinium family, but it hasn't been bred into no. every day. No. I can't remember what it is, but yeah. yeah, I'll let you know. But they haven't managed to cross that I, in. Um, yeah. Yes, you can get a yeah. smell day, but I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't like to sell them under, under that guarantee. No, yeah. no. <laughs> no, no. Do you have a favourite dahlia? No, I don't know if I have really. Um, I suppose David Harden. Yay! <laughs> gotta be. Yeah. That is what we were going for. <laughs> You've got there in the end. After yeah. all these years, but, it's your yes, favourite. Yeah, but um, that had been good publicity for me. You know, mm-hmm. I've been on television quite a lot, and yeah. magazines, and Monty Don likes it. He might not like it. It's probably good. Then. <laughs> if Monty Don says it is so, yeah. <laughs> but is there any strains of dahlia that are bred out there now? New ones that you admire, for example. Because well, there's some new patio choose, ones, different I'll be types. I'll truthful with you, I just switched to perennials. I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say I'd gone off that is, but I, I haven't took the same interest. Mm, yeah, when, okay. you do, when you do when you breed, you've got to live and think, that's what you've got to think about, yeah. really. Yeah. So, um, no, no I, I, I wouldn't like to comment on that, really, to okay. be fair with you. Yeah. But no, we're, we're perennial matters and... Keep the quality up, and that's all we do, really, isn't it, Christine? Amazing, great. great. So, in the second part, then that's what we'll talk about. We'll talk about yeah, perennials more plant and bare root, more yeah. plant gossip. Thanks. Yeah, okay, you're right on, yeah. Thank you. This episode of the Plant Based Podcast is brought to you by our friends at VeggiePod. Their integrated raised vegetable garden bed kit makes growing vegetables easy for everyone. So we're back here with David Howard and his daughter, Christine, and we're going to talk more about Howard's Nursery and also a lot of the specialist plants that they offer. But we're also going to tell you the story behind bare root plants, why bare root is the sensible way to buy plants, how it can save you money, but also give you better success in the garden. And we're also going to gossip a bit more about plants because I want to pick David's brain a bit more on some of those plant families and find out what he thinks of some of the newer varieties, a few of his recommendations as well. But we're going to kick off this section with a bit of how-to, a bit of advice. So first of all, explain to the listener, David and Christine, what bare roots really are and how they can be used in the garden. Because a lot of people would look at them and think, oh, that's just a wet spider. But that's not (laughs) the case, is it? (laughs) What's a bare root plant? (laughs) Bare root, what is a bare root plant? Well, it's lifted out and in the open and then transplanted out, I suppose. Mm, but that is alien to a lot of people, isn't it? It is really. They usually see plants in pots yep. in the garden centre. Yeah, the reason they like, like your pots because they don't get their hands dirty, do they? Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> and also, I guess when you buy a plant in a pot, you may be seeing it flower already, aren't you? So yes, you're buying yes, it because visually yes, you can yes. see what that's going to look like. With but bare that root, can be you don't so see misleading that. misleading sometimes. Yes, very much yeah. so, yeah. But yeah. you still can't be planting them plants in your order with bare roots and good solid plant you get you could get better um, reply from the plant yeah mm-hmm. better quality they establish nicely don't and they the root can, system you can go in the gardens winter. when you go in new borders sometimes you can see where they've been bare root or pots mm-hmm. because the quality see the there. difference yeah Okay. And that's because you're planting at a time when the plant is dormant yeah and so it's easy yes. to lift it that's as correct well. yes yes but um Bare root, you know, we still sell a lot. Well, I think we sell a lot of bare root to be potted on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. that's what I meant okay. too. 
But garden designers, they do buy the bare roots, don't they, more and more? Yes, now. yes, mm. ago we had talk here, yeah, yes, and he was full of bare root, wasn't he? The but bare roots are cheaper as well, aren't they? Oh, yes, yeah, so you get better yeah. quality because you get a clump, you can split it into three, four, what you want. But I guess the client doesn't get that instant effect, so how do they get that? But you've got a healthy that? plant to start yeah. with. Mm. Um, it, like with the irises and agapanthus, that's their two-year um, plant, um, and... You, I don't know. With with a bare root plant, you're getting to, you're getting to actually know the plant. I always feel mm. you're getting to know the root structure. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting to understand it a bit more. Um, okay. That's then, nice. And then um, yeah, garden designers have a good good solid plant to plant into yeah. the ground. And also, when you plant a uh, plant in a pot, you might be planting that in the summer and you're going to have to water that in establish mm. it more bare plant you just drop in really in the autumn and yes. kind of yes. forget about yes. it really yes. Yes. and also there must be yeah. more risk of pests and diseases if you're buying a contain in a container as well rather than bare root because I mean there's been quite a few reports of vine weevil oh, yes. uh, you know yes. coming in from centres with yes. in containers mm-hmm. yeah yes yes that can be a pain that vine weevil can it mm. we um we put yeah, came up in the compost, so we don't we don't find yeah. Out. So what have you got growing here at the moment then? What's what's going on at the nursery at the moment? Well, at the moment we're very busy on garden centre, not on containers actually. The narrators are going out in containers and look. Oh, this time of year while yeah. we're here, isn't look, it? Looking yeah. very good actually. But um, what's quite nice, you can see the bare root plants that pod into the containers, can't you? Like, yes. Um, mm-hmm. The persicarias, the irises, um, and you can see there's a good strong plant mm-hmm. um, in the containers which are going out. Okay. So when you're growing bare root, so we've got all these lovely banners with the um, pictures of lovely day lilies. You have to cut those back, don't you? You have to cut the flower yeah. off oh, yes. yeah. in order to yeah. have your bare root plant. Mm. Yeah, it's so sad, and we're getting more better at it. We're cutting them back sooner now. But we, we don't need the flowers, we need the roots. Uh, yeah. And you can see but, when you dig the plants up that the, 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 well, the plants are just amazing how they bulk up. Uh-huh. And it's, it, every year it's incredible. When you take like a phlox root cutting in December, and then you know that's going to be sailing in October. It, and how they, yeah, yeah, how they grow it is, it well, is I'm incredible. sorry but what do you do with the flowers <laughs> you just cut them off cut and them go off. in the bin yeah <gasps> it's compost. Yeah, but, compost. Yeah. but come on in this Instagram age there's bound to be someone out there that has got a use for those flowers I'm sure it's got to be yeah. someone local as long as they come and collect them and yeah. do all the yeah. the job yeah. for you but yeah. It's got to be someone yeah. local, and it's, it's hard work too. But, well, it must um, be so yeah. sad to see all these flowers yeah. in the skip, but to know that's a good thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah so I, I couldn't agree more, but... That's hard good. to marry that up in your head, isn't when it? When I was here last time, there was someone here taking photographs, wasn't there? I remember her going... Of the skip? Of <laughs> <laughs> the flowers before they were cut, because they're visually so amazing. You know, yeah. obviously you've got acres and acres, and there's all these yeah. gorgeous, colourful flowers. Oh, could you not have, like, a pick-your-own weekend? People could come and pick their own bunch of flowers. <laughs> yeah, I think we said... We did say yeah. that, didn't we? Or Florists yeah. could yeah. come and pick Oh, them they would love that on Instagram. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. All about Instagram. We need to car parking, but yeah, apart from that, yeah. <laughs> well, they can come on the bus. <laughs> Organised buses, yeah. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the client, you know, the customer is receiving mm. a really good, strong, yeah. bare root yeah. plant, and that's yeah. the goal yeah. of your yeah. business, isn't and it? And plastic-free. And plastic-free. Of Very course. important, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But you don't sell directly to the public here, do you? No. No, so you're selling to people that then sell the bare root on through mail order, or you sell to garden centres that yes. perhaps pot it up or sell it as a yeah. as a bare root. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, tourist yeah. attractions also have our plants to sell, um, okay. yeah, plants and gardens. Yeah, it's, it's amazing when they mm. go all over the country. Wow. Um, yeah, anyone who wants wholesome plants sort of comes this way. So give us some tips on planting bare roots. If I was to now order some bare root plants, what would I do with them once I've received them? Because they can look kind of scary, you know. Yeah, you get them, you're like, like well, what wet spider. Yeah, what do I do with this wet spider, yeah. I think that's the thing, don't be scared of it. And, and so many people are scared of it. Um, they're a lot tougher than, than they, you think they are. Um, irises can last, say, up to three weeks that have to plant yeah. them. So, no. um, well, they're often in cold stores before they're sent yeah. out sometimes yeah. from some nurseries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mm. yes, it's, it's not to be scared of them. Um, and just to make sure you've got good prepared soil. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, and if you see how we plant them in the fields with, um, yeah, the planting machine... You just waz uh, them in, yeah, don't you? Yeah, you just tap them in, unfortunately. <laughs> Obviously the right way up, but, um, yeah. Yeah, how does the customer know the right way up? Because... 
to us, it's yeah. really intuitive. But sometimes, mm. uh, if somebody hasn't grown a plant before, they'll look at it and they're like, what, what is the root? What is yeah. the shoot? Because some plants can look the same whatever way up you look at them sometimes, yeah. can't they? Yeah. Yeah. What's the answer? That's quite actually. Yeah. I think yeah. that's quite easy to ask. Did you say? I know. Um, I suppose with us, though, the way we trim them to, yes, you know, that's our, um, perhaps the roots, um, we would trim them sort of two fist lengths, whereas the top uh-huh. might be a bit more shorter. Okay. And, and I guess yeah. the roots do face, yeah. like they do go down, so you mm. would perhaps instinctively yeah. know that down it's means It's strange, that it's not way. that obvious, because um, the friend I'm staying with at the moment, he had some bare root of stilby that came yes. in the post. Yeah. The stilby's going to be funny. They yeah. can look strange, because the top is kind of a bit brown and withered, but also the roots look brown and withered, so he really didn't know what way up. Right. No and way. it's kind of hard to describe without almost a diagram or being there yeah. so yeah yeah okay so don't be scared of berries <laughs> <laughs> chuck them in <laughs> well, make sure your soil's prepared yeah. first well, i think yeah. the best time is to plant them in autumn time get them established mm-hmm. right. just before the winter if you can and then once they're in you don't need to water them or anything over winter well, if, if you're putting them in autumn time you shouldn't have to water would no. you christine but um mm-hmm. but of course if you're planting in the spring yes yeah have to a bit of water yes. and would they will they flower the next year oh yes yeah, yeah. oh yes yes should do so you can basically if they're from howards of course obviously they yeah of course so if you were to plant your bare root which is cheaper than buying container grown in autumn time yeah. let it establish over winter yeah um perhaps start watering it from spring or when there's dry weather as you would you know any other perennial i suppose yes, yes. but having made sure that your soil's all prepared yeah, first you should thing. then risk get flowers spring yeah. summer that year onwards yes, which, uh, put some compost into it or, or manure some yeah. description mm-hmm. and do, do a really good job make sure there's no perennial weed in it yeah mm-hmm. and grass or okay Bind weed and all that. Oh, don't yeah. mention bind weed on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> it is my nemesis. Yeah, <laughs> naughty corner now. <laughs> David, we're no longer friends. No. <laughs> but I want to. I want to gossip more about plants. Can we do that? Yes, we are. On. What? What about? No, but actual varieties, Ellen, not the techie side of it. Come on. Well, yes, okay. When yes, we we grow a lot of grasses and uh, miscanthus, okay. and they're very very popular. Mm-hmm. So it's been very good. But grasses used to. Be popular in the eighties, then it went down yes. like dahlias, and now they are back. Aren't yes, they? Um, I think that's the way the designers have put them in. Um, okay. uh, either doing mass one bed of grass, or um, um, I think most scamps in New Yorkshire is just grass. Mm-hmm. But you can also set a grass in a border somewhere, mm. which uh, do look quite attractive during winter. They give lovely structure, well. don't they? Yes, lovely yes. structure, and you can get so many yeah. different varieties. Oh, one, one I do like is a um, Miss Can, not Miss Can, a steep gigantic. Together, like right. a wild oak flower. Yeah. And everyone like that. We sell quite a few of that, don't we? I like the stripy ones, like <coughs> zebrinus. Yes. Yes. Or little zebra, like, oh, which is the dwarf that, one. It's really oh, nice. I was so lucky because we went and me and another lad went over to Germany, a chap called Pargo, and he's, he's specialised in Miss Kansas. You know, he's doing research in these ground for power stations and that. Anyway, we, we we went to his place and by Jew he was jolly good. Mm-hmm. He, he was in his he's getting on in his age, but what he didn't know about Miss Cant is unbelievable. Wow. And um, and he was very, very helpful really. He couldn't speak English and I couldn't speak German, but by Jew we had a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> you taught the language of plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Latin, yeah. Latin. I've yeah. had that in many countries, yeah. it's rare. Yeah, it's amazing. But you can still get by yeah, because you love definitely. plants yeah, and you can I remember speak a student Latin. from his come over he said, David and Mr. Hodge, you really enjoyed that visit, didn't you? I said, Yes I did. And he said, We laughed about languages the same. Uh, and yeah. therein lies the benefit of keeping Latin names. Yes, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is really very yeah. much so. I, know. I wonder if um, we could pose these guys a question and ask them what their must-have plants are for the garden. Perhaps you'll must-have five perennial plants. Oh, that's a good one. For a garden, for a kind of beginner garden as well. You yes, know, a plant that yeah. doesn't give you much yes. trouble but gives you yes. a real colour for your money. Yes, What do you reckon? One. It's got to be iris. Yeah, but which which one? Which one? Oh, yeah. Well, what, what variety was? Oh dear. Oh, not them. What about five plants yeah. right now? Oh, no, <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm, I'm good with, um, species. I'd say definitely iris, yes, mm-hmm. and I'd give hardy geraniums because they're, they're lovely things, you know. Okay. Grow anywhere, don't they? Any yeah, particular grow. one? Well, Ru- Rosanne is obviously good, but yeah. other ones. Which one was that, sorry? Rosanne. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, but, yeah. One of the centenary. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. but there's, there's, there's some good ones out there, and that's a good one. Aris, geraniums, there's a 
I don't suppose you could say him and Callis. Yeah. But um, you call me out now. I like him and Callis, actually. <laughs> I love the, I, like, the bright oranges, the bright yellows. Yes. I know they don't bloom long, but if you keep deadheading them, and you get so more and more. Salvias give a good display, really, don't they? Yeah. I mentioned grasses, haven't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, Salvias, which Salvia, in particular? Um, uh, Caradonna. Caradonna's Caradonna. nice. Bees love mm-hmm. that. The that is a lovely one. There's yeah. something about that one, isn't it? That was really popular in the flower shows a couple of years ago. Yes, it was everywhere, yeah, wasn't that it? still is popular, actually, yes. Cool. I think another we got plant, it there, then. Another plant, what you don't see much of, but we grow, is Anchus and Lodden Royalist. That's a lovely blue. Mm-hmm. If you walk around the nursery and see it today... Mm. And, blue flowers are yeah, really yeah. just beautiful. We've, we've, we've been doing a number of years, and we always try and get into Chelsea because they always look nice. Yeah. We've got some going up on Monday. Oh, you've got some there this yeah. year? Yeah, you can see it today. You know. uh-huh. Wonderful. But, um, I would like to get a group in someone, someone's garden, and uh-huh. that was always a winner. And you can guarantee that will be picked up on television. There you yeah. go. Oh, that's a pretty good list. We are going to have an article up on the website at the same time with some of your recommendations. So oh, yes. we've got Anchusas, we've, we've got, got Hardy Geraniums, Iris, yep. Hemicallis, yeah. and grasses as well. Yes, yeah. yes that's not a bad selection. Excellent. I think that would make a really lovely border. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ready-made garden yeah. design. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen have a knack, I'm really like the Iris really, we have got a knack of Miss Canters. Mm-hmm. We split them up in February and pot them up. You can, you can see them today. They don't look nothing great in the moment, but give them another month, they'll be up. Aren't they? Are they invasive like bamboo, though? Or no, not? no, Because no. they look like such a monster. Yeah, no, they're not really. Yeah. No, you can control them in general, okay. yes. But you need to cut them back or they don't spread that far? How do you...? Just cut them back. OK. But we never had trouble with invasion. Mm. I know we've got some the other one outside here, but we set fire to it as a week. <laughs> as <you laughs> Intentionally. <can> <laughs> yes, you did, actually. It's a windbreak, <laughs> wasn't it, actually? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, after, I remember as a guy, I remember, he was 20, 30 years ago now, isn't it? We had paraguay and all up, and that all got blown down. So... What are we going to put in? We put this grass in. That'd been wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. the way to get rid of it is to burn it out, then. Well, you could do, but yeah. you don't have to do nothing like plastic tunnels nearby yeah. or irrigation. Because <laughs> you often hear that with pampas, don't you? The way to get rid of it is to oh, burn yeah, it out. Yeah. Yeah. There's no other way to get so rid of it. So border the plant in the garden, just burn it. Backbreaking, <laughs> digging it up. Yeah. Just don't have little hedges nearby. Yeah. So you got, you got, I don't think we also recommend it too much. Uh-huh. <laughs> so just to finish off, then whilst this. This is going to be a cheesy question, but I have to ask it. Mm-hmm. Wh- what's your favourite plant, Christine, oh, of all cruel. time? I know it's mm. cruel. It's the most I horrible know. question to ask any horticulturist, Ellen. Do you realise? Which realize? is why I ask <laughs> it. It's why I ask it. I tell you why. Because most people say, "Oh, I can't decide. I can't mm. decide. I don't know. You can't ask me that." But then they always come up with one. Mm. Yeah, but it changes every day. That's well, okay. Today, she'll come up with what? the one she wants to what? sell. Yeah. <laughs> today, what's your favourite? The one she's got my stock off. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think. <laughs> Go on. Uh, oh, I'm, I don't toy either. Um, and she's a London royalist or yeah. Iris Lager. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm, but, nice. I, but I think nice. every year, they, every year. <laughs> <laughs> Every year it changes, yeah. I think. Yeah. Daily yeah. changes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I I go around the nursery some mm. years. And that's going to be top of pops here. That that plant, mm. see, and that must be is. But um, you you can't really say really. I think it might depend on the weather yeah. how it performs. Really what's the hard. one you would love to have on your kitchen table? If you have a vase of flowers, what's the one that you would love to have? Yeah, interesting. That is, um, I tell you what, I don't dislike probably reasons, name varieties. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so grandma got, used to grow those. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one called Brenda, and that's, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, a lot of poses, it's a pity, really. I go from seed, you don't get the same effect. Mm-hmm. But we have got quite a few name ones in, and, that, and you get Brenda on the table, you can't resist it. Yeah. Yes, wow. Brenda and... There you go. Yeah. See? That's oh, really cool. 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 That's cool. That's cool. All these memories of plants that my grandma used to grow in her yes. border. She would have grown that. Yeah. She would have grown that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You she never... had a really rich red one. Yeah. yeah. That would... As well. Yeah, it's, it's reddish, that's what you mm. say. I don't think I need flour at the moment, but never that is a good one, no doubt about it. Good cut flour too, very good. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, cut, I mean, cut flour is a big so at the brilliant. moment as well. I love these memories, really. Because my, my grandma had this big bed of bearded iris, and I've got such yes. memories of 
them coming into flower, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. being able to recognise well, what colours they were by the rhizome that as well. Time, our Ashtabank was very popular, yeah, and then they went out, yeah. and now they're sort of put them back in again. It's amazing how things come around. Oh, like the I know. Oh, some of the other, um, if we've got another few minutes, I want to talk about some of the other ones that my grandma used to grow, because you'll, you'll know them as well. Physostegia, oh, yes, the obedient right. plant. Yeah, 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 where you yeah, can yeah, that flower yeah. 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 So she had those in the border. Yeah. Um, Alstroemeria, but only yes. kind of this orange coloured yes, one, right. the Dab really orange. classic one. Dab, Dab orange, um, Achillea, the pearl. Yeah. I love yeah. Achillea. Yeah. Yeah. Bees yeah. and butterflies love, love Achillea. Types of oh. they're, they're a good plant. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And they used to cut them for bunches and also yeah. like show at local flower yes. shows with these items yes. as well. Nice it's bright really... yellow ones. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. such great. And she had obviously the double flowered Quonso hemicellis. Oh yes, big double that orange really, flowered yeah. one. Always seen on big estates mm. it must have come through you know I think yeah. they had uh, them thorned in it they always had they grown in the parks <gasps> And all of these classic. are brilliant for wildlife as well um, oh, they? Like, oh yes also brilliant for wildlife she had lithrum Listen. Lovely big oh, yes. pink one that oh, likes yes. a damp soil yes. that the bees and butterflies love yes. that one yes. it's yes. an amazing yes. plant yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of plants out there. We'd go on forever, couldn't we? Yeah, no, I know. We could go on forever, but we can't, sadly. Oh, why can't we? Why can't we have, like, plant chat uncut? <laughs> <laughs> Where you just chat, you know, we're yeah. just, like, gossiping for plants for we'll the rest carry of the day. On, we'll carry on <laughs> chatting and then put the uncut version <laughs> out there as well, yeah. <laughs> um, it has been an absolute pleasure. Yes. Thank you very much to both of you, David and Christine, Thank for spending you. time with us. Obviously, it's just always so fantastic to sit and talk with true plant lovers isn't mm, it you definitely. know and it's just mm. the, the passion comes through and uh, yeah yeah and also to find out the secret behind growing the best plants which yeah. is bare root plants too and yeah. we'll be putting up some pictures of bare root plants to yeah. kind of show you what they are and they do look scary at first yeah. but the results you get are really so much better yes. than pot grown yeah yes. most of my allotment by the way is growing with bare root yeah. plants I mean, I had yeah, to establish yeah. a whole new allotment, so that mm. was really the way forward. Yeah, the best way. And I took it over in October, so it was mainly bare root over. Mm, right, over time good. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, bare root plants, way forward. So, are you going to walk around now? Or? We'll have oh, a yeah. look, we'll have we, a little we walk around now. We definitely want to look we around. We can't wait to have a little <laughs> walk around. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> Thank Always you. Always time for plants. Thank you. <laughs> Why are you expecting me? You're well, looking at me as if I've got this pun to start with. But I haven't got one today, every, right? I'm disappointed. Then. Well, maybe I'm not as funny as you imagine. <laughs> or at all. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I don't even imagine that you are. <laughs> oh, pun delicious. Oh, I do love a punnet of strawberries. Oh, my there you go. gosh. We're in. There you go. Okay. Ding dong. Pun done. What are you talking about today, Melon? Memories. Melon, well, we've just Melon been memories. talking to lovely David, yeah. who is a absolute horticultural legend isn't he and it was really good listening to how he was you know how he got into loving plants from childhood and how then everything developed yeah so you know i think we should talk about our memory yeah well especially because so many plants that they still grow and a lot of their range is still traditional and a lot of those plants evoke memories of Gardening with my nana. I know, know. when we were there, yeah. you could say, oh, that reminds me of mine, yeah. that reminds me of that. And that's really nice. It's that? amazing that plants can do that. Yeah. So what plants do you remember? Oh, I know what your one is. You know what actually. I'm going to say, yeah. don't you? Well, there's actually two, but the main one is marigolds. Yeah. And I'm sure I've said it many times What colour marigolds? Oh, they were, re- they were orange. Yeah. Real and traditional. real traditional orange marigolds. And I know I've said it before, but... It was just, I couldn't, as a young child, I never really understood why there were so many marigolds all around this, mm. my uncle's garden. And uh, it was because he was growing his own vegetables uh-huh. organically okay. and he used those as companion plants. Yeah. I don't suppose he ate the, the marigolds like I would now, yeah, or he'd yeah. have them on the allotment all the time for that reason as well. Um, but it just really reminds me of standing in my auntie and uncle's council house in their lounge and the window looked out the garden yeah. and with the net curtains oh. and I can I can remember that moment of standing there and looking out and thinking why are there so many of these orange flowers <laughs> like what 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 about all the other flowers you could yeah. get but I can remember and and mono <laughs> yeah mono but it kind of looked quite cool yeah and now I can even remember like the smell of the room in a good way but you know I, I, I it everything comes back yeah definitely. and I can remember the shed 
all from just standing at that window and mm. where he stored all of his tools, which actually I inherited oh, some of his gardening oh, wow. tools. It's so great to go back to those memories, to go back to those Yeah, times like revisit sometimes. it yeah. and wow. yeah. It's funny you say marigolds because I think the first packet of seed that I ever grew was marigold tiger eye. Okay. And I think, um, well, maybe it wasn't the first, but. I remember we were given it at Badgers. Do you know what Badgers is? No. What's Badgers that? is um, the kid version of St John's Ambulance oh, Cadets. Oh, yeah, the Badgers. Yeah. You went to Badgers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, how cute. We used to wear berets. That's they were really, and these oh. really scratchy jumpers as well. Oh, no. my God. Just horrible memories. And I was really <laughs> lank. Lank, is that a word? I'm sure you learnt lots of Lank and skinny as well. Um, Anyway, and they gave away these packets of seed. And I remember it was Thompson Morgan seed, this little packet of marigold tiger eye. And I just remember that packet and growing those seeds. So that, marigolds have a memory for me. But I used to love, um, my grandma every so often would grow tagetes, like the kind of, the traditional (laughs) one, the one that looks all fern like yeah and the, the smell of those is amazing and they were always yeah definitely and they were always such like these ethereal kind of plants i was like wow that's really lovely and i loved how they looked like almost miniature conifers as well yeah yeah really what cool are the really big ones because i grew those ones are i'm gonna actually... lay down ellen do you mind by okay the way? so just so I'm i can show you just here. so you can understand the situation oh, i think Michael that makes me come across a lot completely nicer completely stretched out on my on my sofa right. are you okay this, there they should take a picture of this it looks like i'm on the you um, look like therapist you're having, you look like chair. you're having counseling yeah. um <laughs> What are the are they African marigolds? The real, yeah, the real big, big flowered ones. ones. Yeah. Um, I had those on my allotment once, which looked stunning. Yeah, but they got really <laughs> tall, really yeah. big, flowered for ages, and actually looked amazing. But I was really disappointed because they weren't really what I meant to get. But when we were at um, Howard Nurseries, <laughs> there was a few plants that David mentioned that reminded you of your. You nana. are correct, Ellen. What were they? I can't remember what they were. Um, this is so funny. So you're just so cute at the moment. <laughs> I don't know why, but every now and again, Michael just laughs at me. Well, and then I say, why are you laughing? He says, because you're cute. And it's not well, something I've... I'm just on put... the sofa and you're talking over me as if you're about to tuck me into bed or something. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, anyway, it was pyrephrum yeah. uh, that they mentioned, which is like this really, really cool daisy-looking plant, which has got this real maroon red flower and I remember my grandma cutting those for indoors as well and to show at the local flower shows and I think if you soak it in water you can make pyrephrum or something which is like an insecticide or something. Okay, that's something new like to that. me. I'm going to have to look into that. Also Achillea, but not like kind of Achillea type yarrow but Achillea tarmica, the pearl Okay. is the variety and it has this little kind of pom-pom white flower okay. remember those and my grandma was cutting those for indoors um, specifically I remember her bearded iris bed actually and obviously being at David Howard's I um, evoked a lot of those memories and how the rhizomes needed to be on the surface because they needed to bake in the sun and the little kind of tricks that my nana then taught me while we were obviously spending time with those plants and I always remember they bearded iris are beautiful but they don't flower for long no, they but when they are in flower, weeks. they are beautiful. Know, so it's worth it, isn't you it? You just wish they'd flower for longer. And um, you often <laughs> say that iris would, is your favourite plant yeah, because know. of the memory. I do, yeah. And they were nice. And I remember there was a lot of different colours. There was... In those, like, in those days, in kind of like my nana's garden, I don't know if we knew what the names of things were. We just knew... That we yeah, had I would. So it was not, like, yeah. oh, that blue one. Yeah. <laughs> that blue one. But there was a lovely yeah. one there in the field today. Was it Togo? Toga. Roger? Mm, I can't remember Mm. now. Anyway, but it was a dwarf variety Uh and apparently they're not quite so in demand because people want the stunning tall iris, which is a shame because actually they'd look lovely in containers. Well, yeah, the pygmy iris are really useful for rockeries, pots, etc. Yeah, definitely. So what was your very earliest childhood memory of gardening? Like the very beginning, like what was the first thing you can remember? Um... Maybe growing a runner bean in a uh, in a jam jar by a paper towel, but also um, growing tradus cantia, you know the yeah, houseplant nice. type, yeah. in a maybe in water, and then we potted it up, and then took them home, like at the end of term, 
And I remember for some reason I was going to plant it into the garden because I just started to have my own flower patch in the garden. And um, I remember like digging a hole for it and kind of like, and I was typically clumsy in those days as well. So I dug the hole and I stepped back to, to plant it and I stepped on the plant. <laughs> and uh, oh my God, it's this really painful memory because I just oh. remember crying and being beside myself. But you continued loving plants yeah, and gardening. But, yeah, just, but I stood on my bloody plant, but obviously quite dumb because, of the, you know, the bloody easy plants to grow anyway. Even if you stand on them, it'll be fine. But when you're a kid, you're a bit more devastated than that. A bit more you? emotional like, about the situation. Yeah, like these days, you know, I'd throw a plant around. Do you know what I mean? No, so. you don't. <laughs> no, but like, you know what plants, like if you're... Yeah trying to stuff a load of plants in a box or a bit you know which ones can cope and which with ones are which too can't. delicate you yeah know. so of course yeah you're being delicate but sometimes you might need to carry one box on top of another and yeah. it's just like that you know i'm obviously a nurseryman at heart you know mm-hmm. in my blood so what's your other memory you said two plants you didn't tell us well other. weirdly cabbages um my uncle I, I don't really know what he used to do with these but he'd give me a jam jar yeah. and i'd have to go down to this vegetable patch and pick the caterpillars off the cabbages because oh. he didn't spray them where did you anything. put them when you picked well them? i put them in the jam jar and then give them to him but i don't know what he then done with them probably fried them for breakfast <laughs> oh god that's awful <laughs> I, so i don't know but i love i think that's where the grow your own side i mean that's what i love doing mostly and what, eating cauliflowers for breakfast? Cabbage. Cab- 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 cabbage. <laughs> cabbage is uh, ace. It's just so good for you. I love growing yeah, it. There's, some, love there's just something. Sauerkraut's fab. Yeah. There's just something. It's so good for you. Mm. That, I don't know, cabbage is kind of like the epitome, if you like, of grow your own. And I just, I don't know. I just get really satisfied when I see it and it just provokes those memories. Wow, but cool. I used to think fairies lived at the bottom of our garden. Yeah. My parents' garden. Um, when I was t- teeny tiny, they've always been into gardening and we had a kitchen garden. And there was a blue shed at the end of the garden, loads of gooseberry bushes and loads gooseberry. of peas. <laughs> I can always remember peas. And um, I yeah. love gooseberries as well. And I used to hide underneath the bushes and pinch the gooseberries in the what? peas and Did eat them. Did get by the fawns? Maybe, I don't think. It was just a, just a child. Yeah. But I used to truly believe that fairies lived underneath our blue shed. <laughs> and my dad would, would always say, you're not allowed in this shed. You never go in the shed that is out of bounds. So I always used to think... Because he had his porn in no, there. I, oh, <laughs> well, I am going to tell you what he did have in there. But it, I would... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I yeah. used to think it was magical in there. Yeah. Of course, it, you know, as a child... Anyway, it turns out it wasn't allowed in there because he was brewing his own beer. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God, how funny. <laughs> or just dangerous tools <laughs> it could have been a good excuse I know they used to give me all the tools uh, to have a go with hey we used to stamp out earwigs on the ground <gasps> um, you'd have a cane obviously a garden cane and then on the top an upturned small terracotta pot with straw inside and the earwigs would then go up there and then we would then empty out that straw into the ground then you stamp out the earwigs Oh my goodness. It's like I was taught that sort of cruelty. I can't handle you know, that situation. Like That's horrible. Um, because the earwigs were then damaged the dahlias, but like, yeah, I don't know. You must know. have had a lot of earwigs, because yeah, dahlias do get earwigs, but unless you've got quite a lot of them, they don't really do make I guess my grandma damage. was savage. Yeah, it sounds it. That would make me cry if I had to do that. <laughs> it's a dark child, I guess. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Stamping out nature. <laughs> Today's podcast partner is VeggiePod, the integrated all-in-one garden bed suitable for anyone interested in growing your own. You'll be amazed at how quickly your vegetables grow in a VeggiePod, and as a special offer for our listeners, VeggiePod are offering PBP subscribers 10% off any sized VeggiePod when purchased with a stand or a trolley. Simply go to veggiepod.co.uk and enter PBP10 on checkout. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Plant Based Podcast. Have a browse of the rest of the library or hop on over to the website, which is theplantbasedpodcast.net. You'll also find our social media links. Please connect with us and let us know about any plant based projects that you think we should be covering on the show. And make sure you subscribe to our podcast so you'll be the first to hear the next episode. We're releasing once a fortnight. So until next time, enjoy the world of plants. <laughs>